Watching TV has changed over time. Streaming has become the new norm. That's why Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast dives headfirst to the world of cord cutting. Want to be on the loop of what's hot in Netflix? Or if it's not a preference, what about original shows in Hulu? We've got you covered. Join us as we fill in the blanks and talk about movies to stream and what show you should be binging. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to the GSMC Television Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Aaron, and how's everybody doing out there in the radio world? Uh, today's recommended listening experience is in the dark, so if you have a light on or if you could draw the shades or something, you can just sit in the dark, relax, try to calm down, and just listen to what we're going to talk about today. we got a lot going on. Uh, we're going to do our streaming breakdown, and we're going to talk about Hulu. We're going to go into that and talk about some of the TV shows and the different things that appear in Hulu as we go through. Uh, We have quite a few for that. And then if you stick around for the end, I'm going to talk about two shows that I find very exciting. And this is a little secret thing between all of us. And these are just two shows that I think everybody should know about. One is more popular, the other isn't. But I think if you hear about them and I talk about them a little bit, maybe you'll be interested and go check them out and give them a little watch. So we'll talk about that as we go, and I hope everybody's ready to get into it. Let's go ahead. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. So today for Streaming Breakdown, we're going to talk about Hulu. Uh, So when you first open up Hulu, there's a bunch of tabs and things at the top, and that's to help organize things out for you. It'll list, like, TV shows, movies. There might be a genre tab. It's different on each kind of, like, console you use. So if you use a laptop, it's going to be different than how you use a phone. But the good news is Hulu has a lot of different categories that you can use, that you can see and try to organize things. So, like, they have a For You list where it's a bunch of shows that line up with things you watch so if you watch a bunch of reality shows they'll recommend reality shows to you if you watch action and comedy they'll recommend similar shows like that they also have things like an originals list where they specifically break down all of their new original content that's coming out for people and so it's always nice to see that up front because then you can separate that from what's new what's old and you can tell what specifically comes from them They also have featured lists where they have a list of shows that are popular right now and multiple different groups of like thousands of people are watching them at the same time. And so they're showing you these as a way to say, hey, if you want to get on these trends, you want to see what everybody's talking about these days, well then you can jump onto that. And that's very nice to see. It's kind of interesting to have somebody kind of lay that out for you about what's popular. I know Netflix has a a top 10 in Netflix US, but... Uh, it's still see it's still nice to see Hulu have a featured list similar to that. Uh, Hulu also has a list that I find intriguing called the Staff Picks, and what that is is its staff at Hulu have been asked for some of their favorite shows on the website or through the streaming service, and so they list theirs out. And it's cool to think that somebody working over there not only watches this show but likes it so adamantly that they want to apply it to a list that everyone can see. And there's thousands of users on Hulu. There's almost there's more than millions. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of people there that are going to see that list and it's going to affect them. And so it's always cool to, to kind of be tied back to that source so that it doesn't completely cut you off from what you're thinking about and you're not like, oh, this is a company providing a service. When you see that staff picks, you think these are people providing me a service and they still have things they like. They're not just spewing out this content, they're actually enjoying it. And so I think that's a fun thing to think about. Um, They also have very old classic TV shows like Family Matters. Uh, I Love Lucy is on there. I think there's two different versions of I Love Lucy because there's I Love Lucy and then there's The Lucy Show. And so both of those have a few seasons you can go and watch and enjoy. Uh, They also have the Brady 
Brady Bunch and a lot more old shows on there that you can go check out. I know they had Wings. I saw that one on there. Um, they also have classic cartoons and comedies. So they have like Animaniacs is on there. Uh, there's like Danny Phantom for, for the generation closer to me. Um, and there's a lot of just fun shows that you can go on there and watch. Uh, for comedies, they have like 30 Rock, and so that one's on there. There's a bunch of seasons of that you can go watch and enjoy. And they even have categories, um, uh, at least on the mobile device, they have categories where you can go in and see complete listed shows. So, like for example, if you scroll through, you can see when it gets to a certain category... It'll tell you complete series. And so that means they have almost every episode, if not every episode, of that series. And you can go in and watch it from start to finish, knowing that it's entirely there. Because I know oftentimes I'll find a show that I like, and I'll get there and I'll start streaming it, and I'll get like two seasons in. And then I realize they don't have a third season, but I know there's six seasons of the show... But they have seasons four and five, but then not six as well. And it's just aggravating, and it makes me upset sometimes. But it's nice to know that Hulu is at least separated out into some degree of a category where you can scroll through and see a full series of comedy. So I'm looking right now. They have 10 Things I Hate About You, 30 Rock. They have Adventure Time. They have that complete series on there. That's nice to see. The Bernie Mac Show. There's quite a few different things on here. So there's a lot of for that. And then they also have another category of full listed shows called Full Series Drama. And so they have 12 Monkeys on there. They have 24. And then they have 24 Legacy. And so that's cool. You can go watch both of those. I know they have Black Sails on there. Uh, that was from Stars. I believe that's available for everyone. Uh, as well as Bones. I didn't realize Bones was that big of a drama, but... Um, they have it on there listed as that full show. So that's a cool thing to think about that they have that fully on there. They also have shows such as like Twilight and Lost, and those have multiple, multiple different seasons. Lost is such a long show. So if you wanted to, while everything's chaos right now, throw yourself back into Lost and try to rewrap your brain around that, you can give it a go. I personally, I jump more for the Twilight Zone because, uh, those are just classics, and they're fun to watch. Lost is cool and everything, but after about seven episodes, I'm tired. And I, I don't get too tired when I'm watching Twilight Zone. So, but yeah, there's a lot of TV that you can go and watch over on Hulu. And there's also a lot of amazing movies that you can go check out. Uh, we do talk about movies when we break down the streaming service. So we have things like Parasite on Hulu, which is an award-winning movie. It was amazing. I highly recommend people go and check that out. It's also interesting to think that they have things that range from Shawshank Redemption to Footloose. So there's quite a few options for you to go check out. There's Child's Play, one of the Chucky movies on there. They also have original content as a, a movie called Palm Springs starring, I think it's Andy Samberg. Uh, so that might be interesting to go check out. I haven't seen or heard too much about that myself, but it could be worth a watch. I have no idea. Um... But yeah, there's just so many amazing things on here. You could also watch the new Rocket Man movie if you wanted to. And then Hulu has add-ons. So if you have the FX the FX add-ons, you can go watch Kingsman. And then you can just kind of connect those two together because Taron Egerton is in both of those movies. And he gives it his all. And it's really nice to watch. So there's just a lot of things that Hulu basically has to offer. And as we go through and we talk about it, it, it kind of feels, the like atmosphere of Hulu feels a lot cleaner and just like pristine as you scroll through. I don't know how to put it in any other way, but it you feel nice when you're scrolling through Hulu. It's like these pretty bright colors. There's, some of them are neon. They stand out. There's amazing graphics happening and things like that. And you genuinely start to enjoy scrolling through the different pages. But... With everything going on, they have so much content similar to Netflix. They had so much content that after a while, you're just scrolling to scroll. I'm not, I don't feel like I'm looking at the shows anymore. I don't feel like I'm looking at the movies. I'm just scrolling past everything. And that gets tiring. So I wanted to use this as a base jump point for anybody to come in, use these shows, use these things to kind of 
ease yourself into Hulu a bit because if you don't, if you just jump straight into it, you're going to end up just scrolling and scrolling, not really finding or landing on anything you like because there's so much to see and do that you're going to get confused between multiple different shows. You're going to start thinking back and forth between them. And oftentimes when I do that, I do not end up watching either of them. I either get distracted by something else or I pick something else entirely. So you can use this list kind of as a way to ease yourself into it if you haven't already. Um, if you have, well, you can also use these as a way to kind of get yourself back into some of the content you miss, some of the old stuff. Like, um, I had no idea that The Twilight Zone was on Hulu, uh, and it was very nice to find that out. Uh, last time I thought it, I thought it was on Netflix, but it might be on both of them. But as for right now, I've, I've seen it on Hulu. Something might have changed recently where that got passed around, but I genuinely do not know. All I do know is that Hulu, they're doing well right now, because they have a lot of content coming out. They also have a lot of originals that are kind of doing quite well right now, and they're at the top of their game with, like, pushing out with new ideas and things in the world. And so being on the forefront of that stuff and that, like, colony it's good for them, and they're going to use it for sure as they move forward. So I'm very excited to see what Hulu has as they move forward into the future. I know that right now they plan to keep making content as soon as they can. Um, I think they recently announced that they would be starting filming soon. Uh, I don't know that for certain, but I remember seeing something about that recently. Um, I can look into that as we talk. But I basically want everything to just kind of be used to get you into it. And and I've said that, so we'll move on past that. But there's there's just so much content on there that you can see. We can talk more about that real quick so that you guys can see everything or I can tell you more about what's on there. Um, so, like, if you want more comedies, um, uh, with Mila Kunis, there's The Spy Who Dumped Me. I've never seen that movie, but everyone I've heard who's seen it loved it. Um, if you like Jim Carrey, The Mask is on there, so that's amazing to go see. There's also new show or new movies, uh, such as Booksmart, which is on there, and um, so that's an up and coming movie that was at the Savannah Film Festival uh, last year, and so it did pretty well there. There's also shows like Community, which is an Emmy an Emmy nominee show, so you can go watch that. There's also like interesting, like kind of like reality shows like Forged in Fire, where it's it's like documentary style things. I've kind of fell in love with Forged in Fire for a while there. Uh, my dad and I watched it together, and it was real nice. And so it was always fun to just watch them make the weapons. And then there's that guy where it's like. He'll use the blade and he'll go, will it kill? And then he'll slice and it was always fun to watch and get into that show. And then you can always go from that. You could easily cross over into Mythbusters. They do similar things where they go in and they do anything they want to try to prove different things. I remember they do one episode about running in the rain, about will you get more or less wet if you run in the rain, and their results were, like, inconclusive. <laughs> and so that was real funny. There's also new things, like Don't, um, and I believe Don't has, uh, oh, goodness, what's his name? Ryan Reynolds attached to it. I think he's one of the executive producers, and he's he appears as a voice sometimes in the show. So there's just a ton of things on Hulu. They also feature um, different things like Shark Week. So they have uh, like different categories where they just play things related to Shark Week. And so I think that's real fun for a streaming service to kind of break that down for people. Because I think Hulu... While Netflix was, like, one of the first major streaming services, Hulu has become more of, like, a new streaming cable service because you can have it on any device. You can have it on uh, your TV, your phone, your laptop, and now you can do Hulu Live, which literally does give you live television shows. But they also, like, on just their regular one, if you don't have Hulu Live, it still feels like you're getting relatively new content like i said they're on the forefront of these things and so it's nice to be able to see a, a streaming platform that feels updated and feels fresh and new almost every time you go on and i know for a while back there i felt every time i went on hulu that 
it was stale. It was bland. I wasn't seeing anything new. But recently, things have drastically changed where I'm seeing new content frequently. As I scroll through, I'm seeing things that are interesting and they're eye-catching. And so I think everybody should go check out Hulu if you haven't already. Um, most people, uh, it's I think it's one of the biggest streaming services in the U.S. and across the world. Um, it, it, it might be first now. I don't know the standings with Disney Plus and all that, but I think they might have been ahead with everything else going on. But regardless, it's still an amazing streaming service to use. It's fun. There's so much content that you can go and explore. You can go through the educational side of Hulu, and you can only watch like history and documentaries and different things, and you can learn. Or you can stick to the sitcom side of Hulu, because there is a ton of things that you can go watch there and be entertained for hours. And so I just recommend it highly to everybody uh, to at least go check it out. I know that I have Hulu, um, and then my parents have, like, Hulu Live, and so that's always fun and interesting to see because then you get the live content and things of that nature. And then beyond basic Hulu, you still have access to tons of tons of TV shows. Uh, Everything I listed today is on basic Hulu except for the Kingsman things and the different things that have the add-ons. But the basic things like I Love Lucy is on there, Animaniacs is on there, Twilight Zone, all of that is on base Hulu, as well as Parasite is on base Hulu. So... I recommend it. I think everybody should go check it out. We're about to go into that break, so I recommend everybody stick around for segment two. We're going to talk about the animation breakdown, about two shows over on Netflix, and stick around for the end of the episode where I'm going to talk about two shows that I think everybody should take a look at. So we'll see you after that ad break. Thank you. Want to know the latest and hottest music hidden the airwaves? Don't be left out. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Music Podcast. Keith keeps you on the loop with everything you need to know from pop, rock, hip hop, and the top 40. And we'll throw in news of your favorite artists, concert and tour dates, and so much more. Listen no further because this is the gold standard in music podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome back from that break. So let's jump right in to Animation Breakdown. All right, and today we're going to talk about two shows that are over on Netflix. I talked about one uh, kind of briefly in one of our other podcasts. But uh, this is the Avatar, The Last Airbender, and we're going to talk about The Legend of Korra, both of which are now streaming on Netflix, the full shows. And so I just want to talk about Avatar, The Last Airbender, because it's very popular right now. And it's very public, and it's very in the public's eye right now, because it recently came to Netflix and became Netflix's number one spot uh, in the U.S. for quite a bit of time. Uh, The show was so popular that it became one of their most streamed shows ever very quickly. Um, And so it really took Netflix by storm. And uh, in 2018, they announced that they were going to uh, be creating a live-action Avatar The Last Airbender uh, and there, there's been a lot of talk about that recently because the creators of the show war, were working on the the live action show along with Netflix, and Netflix originally said that they planned on honoring the creators' natural vision when it came to everything. And then the creators recently announced that um, uh, they were Netflix said they were committed to honoring our vision. Uh, in this retelling of us on the created the series, and we expressed how excited we were for the opportunity to be at the helm. Unfortunately, things did not go as we had hoped. So that's what the creator said, and then he continued on to say that Netflix's live-action adaption of Avatar has the potential to be good. It might turn out to be a show many of you end up enjoying, but what I can be certain about is whatever version ends up on screen, it will not be what Brian and I had envisioned or intended to make. So, that means quite a few things. 
It means that the original creators have officially left, and the reason for them leaving is that Netflix was not really honoring the vision that they had originally agreed to. They originally came in and said that they were going to listen to creators, do whatever they had in mind, and can completely follow them along, uh, and that didn't end up happening. And so Netflix ended up pushing their own path, and it got so bad that the creators officially left the project. So that live-action show is still coming out. It's still in production, or in pre-production. The only difference now is that it'll be Netflix's vision as opposed to the creator's vision. Now, I know a lot of fans are very, very disappointed by this. I was upset myself, but um, I took the creator's uh, own words uh, for advice, and I uh, realized he continued on to say um, some very uplifting things where... While he is frustrated, he thinks that the show will end up being good. So, I, I, I genuinely am still excited that a live action Avatar is being made, but I'm so hesitant moving forward. I, I just want it to be great and I want it to be good. And I know that if you put such high expectations on something, you're gonna go in with negative outlook and you're gonna try to nitpick every little thing, but I honestly think that regardless of what happens, if we attempt to look at it objectively as is it a good show, not is it our show, because our show is the animated one, that one is Avatar, that is our show, this new one coming out will not be exactly our show. And I think we need to start accepting that now, especially considering that they took the creators off. Um, I hope that maybe Netflix will take the community's advice, because a lot of people and myself are asking them to let the creators come back. Let them, let, let them be heard. Listen to them. Take their advice. They know what they're talking about. They made the first show that is so popular. If you don't want to listen to them and you don't want to be okay with that, then you shouldn't be trying to recreate their success. So that's just how I feel about it. Um, I know especially because the creators worked so hard on that show and they made it so magnificent and it created such a a culture for, for many people across the world to enjoy. And I think everybody's just hesitant with everything going on with it, especially considering... Uh, production can't begin for a very long time anyway, and they're so in pre-production, there's still a relative chance that um, that the live action can come back, and that they can get the creators back on board. Netflix will hear our voices and our cries, and we'll, we'll hopefully, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, but uh, I'm also going to talk about those shows. I didn't want to just talk about that. So for those of you that don't know, I'm sorry you had to sit through that, but Avatar The Last Airbender is this kind of like action-adventure comedy where it's about a young monk. It's about uh, a world where a young monk is the last of his kind. And what I mean by that is they live in a place where uh, there's four nations, and each nation is assigned like an element that they represent. And so there's water, there's fire, there's earth, and there's air. And so the monk is the air nomad, and his name is Aang. And um, he finds out that he is this thing called the Avatar. And the Avatar is somebody who can use all four elements because there's in this world there's people called benders. And the benders can bend the elements to their will. So they can like, they can water bend, they can earth bend, air bend, fire bend, and they can just literally like control earth, water, fire, air, things of that nature. And Aang finds out that he's the Avatar, the only person in the world who can uh, bend all four of them. Uh, And something happens where he ends up uh, uh, leaving home, and he gets frozen for a hundred years. And when he wakes up, he finds out that uh, the Fire Nation in this hundred years has attacked and started a war and started destroying other nations. And not only attacking and destroying other nations, but they wiped out his people. So he is um, the last airbender. And so it's really... It's just this heavy story of... Uh, it's a it's a kids show of of oh, it's just so much to talk about. <laughs> so it starts out as this just like kind of magical, strange place, and then it, you get a couple episodes in, and then they're talking about genocide. They're talking about the extinction of a people. It, it goes from from riding penguins to 
complete massacre, and it's rough. It's a rough jump, but it teaches people lessons, and there's so much heart in this show. Um, myself and my girlfriend watch the show so frequently because um, I really enjoy it, and I'm trying to, to get her into it, and she started really enjoying it too, where we can only watch a few episodes at a time because it's so emotional for her. There are parts where this show really kind of tugs at your heartstrings. Um, they have such amazing characters. So Aang is the last airbender. He's also the Avatar, and he's just on this quest to stop the Fire Lord, who's the, the man in charge of the war right now. And uh, he finds these two uh, water tribe people in the South Pole, and that's Katara and Sokka, and they join him on his quest to stop the Fire Lord, and it's, a friendship is formed, and it's amazing. And then those three are being hunted by Zuko, who's the banished prince of the Fire Lord. So there's just a lot of drama going on, and Zuko in Season 1 is a drama queen. We all know it. It's okay. He's angry. He needs to restore his honor. It's fine. He'll get it back eventually, but not the way you think. The, <laughs> you see, the the show, it's, it's amazing. It has a cult following. It has a lot behind it, and there's just a lot weighing on it. It talks about the, the like, distreatment of people. It talks about um, pretending that war isn't real and that it doesn't exist. And it has just all of these major issues, and it approaches them so well with this amazing feeling and presence and the show has an amazing atmosphere the music is so amazing and the animation is so beautiful just everything comes together and the show is a really really great amalgamation of just uh great quality and so i think everybody should go check it out and then there is a sequel to this show uh, a pseudo sequel it's called the legend of korra and that is about the next avatar in the line because we find out it through uh, avatar the last airbender that the avatar thing is a chain of people uh each being reincarnated and korra is the next reincarnation she is from the uh, southern water tribe and she is goes to this major city in the future um, it takes place uh, way in the future of Avatar The Last Airbender, and it just kind of builds on a lot of what Avatar The Last Airbender did, and a lot of fans aren't as attached to this show, but uh, <laughs> it was streaming for about two days and immediately reached... Uh, number two on Netflix's top ten in the U.S. So that's a that's a that's a feat to be achieved. So a lot of people say that they don't like it, but they're out there watching it because they kind of like it. It's great. I think it it really builds on what Avatar: The Last Airbender created, and then it also it makes it it makes it more unique because we learn not more about the world. We learn more about the people, what they've built, their ideals, how things are progressing. And then in the later seasons, things get a bit wild. <laughs> uh, but it's also a moment to learn about the original Avatar, like the first ever Avatar. And I think it's nice to see that world building. And they do uh, a full episode about that. And that episode is so amazing. And I recommend it to everybody who's a fan of the first show. Even if you don't want to watch Korra, you can go watch that. And it's just overwhelming. So the Legend of Korra focuses on her. Uh, she mastered the three elements of water, fire, and earth. She can't get air to save her life. Uh, and it comes down to it <laughs> later on because she moves to this big place called Republic City. And she's staying there with the son of Aang and, and Katara. Yeah, that's right. They get together. It's a spoiler. I'm not... Not regretting it, okay? It's a very old show, and it's very popular. You should know. Um, so she stays with their son, Tenzin, in this place called Republic City. And she finds out about, about this revolution and this workers' uprising and these people about oppression and all of these different things. And she finds out about gangs in the city. And this place is supposed to be the ideal place built by Aang to uh, to be an amalgamation of the four nations and it's not going great and so she has to try to save it and his image and it's just this amazing continuation and i genuinely recommend it and enjoy it because it introduces new fun characters it also brings back some of your favorite characters it builds on like the lineage of some of your favorite characters so um ang has three kids we get to meet all of them um 
we Sokka doesn't have any children, I don't think, but Toph has a daughter. We meet her daughter, okay? We also meet Zuko's grandchild, which is amazing, and that's real nice. And so there's there's quite a few people that you get to to meet and see. And I, I think anytime you build a story in a world so well that the next show to come along can just continue it, I think it's amazing. And some fans don't think that it continues it well. I think that it's a shift because it's not the same Avatar. It's the legend of Korra. We're no longer on Aang. And a lot of times people don't give Korra enough credit, but I think she does great. She's strong, she's powerful, and she speaks her mind. She's different from Aang, and that's okay. And I think a lot of people aren't okay with that aspect, but it doesn't matter. Uh, The show was made, the creators made it and helped it. And I think that... If somebody puts enough work into something to try to make it good, the least you can do is just say that, hey, I respect the effort. Uh, Especially because the people that made the show worked extremely hard um, with what they were given. And they made something very interesting. I really think they did. Um, uh, Throughout it, Korra ends up struggling with the element of air quite a bit through the first season of the show. She can't quite get it. And then... um, of course, there's her training with Tenzin, who is, once again, Aang's kid. He can airbend, and so he's trying to teach her, and it's always this conflict, and they're always butting heads. And so there's just always an interesting dynamic. She creates her own team avatar, much like Aang had his team avatar. And so it's it's just always fun to see how people come together and how a show can continue, not only like parallel the original show, but also continue down the line. And so I really think everybody should go check those two out. So remember, they're both on Netflix. You could go stream them now if you would like. Uh, Avatar is three seasons, and then The Legend of Korra is four. So you can go and check both of those out. They are very interesting and very fun to watch, and I think everybody should genuinely give them a look at one time or another. We are about to go into that ad break, so I recommend everybody stick around for our Bop to Flop show. We're going to talk about that 70s show, and then once again at the end, we're going to talk about two shows that I think everybody should check out. Thank you again. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. back from that break let's go into bop to flop where we're going to talk about a really great tv show that was amazing it was funny it was sweet it had a heart to it uh the main character is terrible we don't like him at all we like every other character but uh and then it it just kind of all fell apart towards the end of the show and we'll talk about that and we'll talk about some of the reasons that might have been and we'll talk about uh kind of the the story behind it so as we go into this i'm going to say spoilers for the show ahead that is the show that 70 show so uh let's go ahead and jump into it first of all it's about this group of kids that are all living in a basement in the 70s they are all um they're all potheads of this time, and they are all sitting around in their basement just trying to be living their lives as chaotic kids in the 70s. They're uh, trying to party all the time. They're trying to do reckless things, and it's just kind of the, the shenanigans that they get into during the show, and it's very fun and enjoyable for everybody. I think it's it's funny. Oftentimes, the, 
the jokes kind of they're very spot on um and other times the show gets quite emotional because there's very sweet moments between some of the characters so we're going to introduce uh all the main characters and i'm going to talk about them and then we'll talk about kind of uh the progression of the show and then we'll talk about why it kind of failed there towards the end it had eight seasons although a lot of people say it only had seven uh because a lot of people try to ignore that eighth season so Let's go into the main character. So we have Eric Foreman, who is this scrawny, skinny wimp of a boy from the 1970s who's the stereotypical, like, nerd and geek. He's really into Star Wars when it starts coming out. Um, he talks funny. He's not really that strong, and everybody kind of makes fun of him for it. Um, and then his two parents, because everybody stays at his house most of the time. It's Red Foreman and Kitty Foreman. Uh, Red is this just very aggressive... Um, father figure who just kind of puts his foot down quite often and he, and he talks, uh, quite a bit about, um, about struggling in life and about standing your ground and things like that. And then Kitty is this very sweet mother figure and she's very nice and she's helpful to all the children and she keeps their secrets as best she can and she talks to them and she's a nurse part time and she's just the sweetest adorable thing. And you learn to love her. She is amazing. And anytime she laughs or speaks, you're just like, Kitty, we have to protect you. And we do. We protect Kitty. Um, and so that's his parents. Oftentimes, uh, in the first couple seasons, his grandparents show up. They're not too big of characters. But we're going to go on to his uh, future girlfriend in the show, Donna Pinciotti. Uh, she shows up and uh, she has this like very long red hair that the gang constantly jokes about. And, um, and so she's just this, like, powerful, kind of, like, tomboy feminist figure, and she's very stand-up about women's rights and things like that, and then her opposite in the group, uh, is a girl named Jackie Burkhart, who is this, like, kind of, like, very, um, uppity, sort of, like, um stuck-up, snobby, rich kid who only cares about clothes and material things. And then um, kind of another counterpart to her is this character named Hyde. His name is Stephen Hyde, but everybody in the group calls him Hyde. Um, he is this, like, rebel child who uh, he has been abandoned by his parents at some point in the show. He becomes orphaned. Uh, Red and Kitty kind of adopt him and bring him in to live with them. And so he stays with them for a majority of the show because he doesn't have parents. Um, and so he's this kind of like, I don't care about anything. Uh, I don't care about the government. It's all a conspiracy kind of guy. And then there's um, an airhead there who's named Kelso. Um, and he's amazing. He's just he's very funny. Okay, He's played by Ashton Kutcher. And he just... Anytime he speaks, you're like, what's coming out of your mouth, man? What are you doing? Um, and so he's there for comic relief. And then uh, he has a best friend as well named Fez. Uh, Fez stands for Foreign Exchange Student, um, mainly because the first time Fez ever told them his real name, they couldn't understand him uh, because he is this uh, like light brown colored man who all of them constantly talk about being foreign. Um, and it's a running joke, but he laughs about it, and everybody's like, this is funny, because it's the 70s, and it's weird, and you shouldn't laugh about it, but, um, it's making fun of that stereotype, so it's okay, and all of them are in on the joke, so it's, it's all good, and it's, it's a very funny show to be able to just sit back, relax, you can put it on, it's on Netflix right now, you could go stream it if you'd like. And the show was doing amazing. It had seven long seasons. It built up through lines and character motivations. And it had multiple different changes where people got divorced. Like Donna's parents got divorced for quite some time. And then um, they they like almost they get back together at one point. And then uh, Donna's dad ends up trying to marry... Jackie's mom, it gets weird for a while. There's a theory that Eric gets in a coma because of a uh, uh, hurricane. I think it was a hurricane or a tornado uh, coming for his car. So there's just a lot of things behind this show. But they built up uh, a community, a bunch of people that were really in love with the show. And the show was doing so well. It was at the top of the network. People were really liking it. It was bringing in views. And then... All of them started becoming popular. They all started doing different things. Um, Ashton Kutcher started branching out. He started doing a lot more acting. And then the main actor who played Eric started branching out as well. Um, and there, there towards the eighth season, he left the show. 
for a season. And he left for that eighth season. And it was rough. They changed everything. You see, they set up all of these character motivations and these arcs, and the original creators of the show wrote out the seven-season show, and they said, this is it. This is the end of it. We're done. And then they wanted more. But Eric had to leave, so they made the original writers leave, and they kept working. And so they kept working on the show, and... They changed storylines, they, and they changed plots because they had nowhere else to go. So everything that was supposed to be set in stone and said and done was torn away and was gone. So relationships changed, um, and entirely new characters were added and then taken out before the end. Um, and people's entire, entire lives changed because of that eighth season. So... Um, it was, it was very interesting to see, like, Eric becomes a teacher and goes over to Africa to teach for this a program where he can get credits to, to become a teacher, and he's gone for that entire season and comes back for the last episode for about 10 seconds. Um, and Donna deserved better. Uh, Donna is his love interest throughout the entire show, and they do many on and off again things. It talks about their love life and their problems and their relationship multiple different times. Um, and I will say this show is for, uh, uh, like older teens or like young adults or adults. Uh, this is not a kid's show, so do not let kids watch this. Um, but so the show was doing so well up until that season and everything went wrong. And so everybody in the community and the fan and the, like the fan group decided to kind of ignore season eight. I've never met somebody that watches that 70s show that is like, I love Season 8. And I mean that genuinely because if you have seen the show, you know what I'm talking about, where they they set up multiple different storylines and plots where Eric is trying to figure out his life, Donna is about to leave to go to college and do her own thing, and then all things start changing and happening, chaos ensues, and then... Eric decides that he's going to be a teacher, which is great. And so he decides that to be a teacher, he has to go to Africa. And he just leaves for the whole season. He's gone, and it's intense and rough. Um, And they change entire relationships because there's two characters that end up together called Jackie and Hyde. And um, I love them together. They are the best couple. They care for each other the most. They genuinely talk out their problems most of the time. Uh, And they're very caring, and they probably have the healthiest relationship. Uh, Eric and Donna have the least healthy relationship. Um, But so those two are together for a good majority of the the middle part of the show. And then he goes to, um, to propose. And because of all the things that were happening... With the changing of the guard and the writers, they decided to cut it and have say him something different happen. They were supposed to stay together and be happy, uh, but instead she ended up they ended up splitting and she ended up ending up with a guy called Fez. We've talked about Fez quite a few times. He's one of the comedic leads, um, and so like everybody really wanted them to be together because it was kind of like a fan favorite of like yeah we love Fez and Jackie together, but. Jackie and Hyde deserve to be together. They they were the best couple. They were the nicest. Um, and so the show itself is quite funny. Uh, I very much enjoy it. I even enjoy parts of season eight because, uh, as I've said before, that if anybody puts effort into things, uh, I will show the respect that they put time into it. Um, but... Then again, I if I don't like something, I'm not going to sit there and watch it. I will say, I'm glad that you made that, but my story ends here. And oftentimes, I do not finish that Herald Season 8. Season eight. Um, sometimes I can get myself through it. Uh, if you are fans of the show, go ahead and let me know what you think. Do you, do you watch Season 8? Do you ignore it? If you haven't heard of this show, it's on Netflix if you want to go check it out. Uh... I think it's quite funny. I think it's enjoyable. It's it's some of the some of the either the dumbest jokes or the best jokes. And to me, those are that's the range you want. So, and, and the, the, some of the relationships they build are so beautiful that 
there's moments of just pure happiness when they connect and they talk about things. And there's a lot of relationship building between Red and Kitty, between Eric and his parents, between um, Donna and everyone else, between Donna and her parents, because her parents split and get back together multiple times, and it really affects Donna, and she's going through a bunch of different things. And the reason why I said at the beginning is that we don't like Eric is because Eric is just kind of very mean. Um, he's just a very rude person to most people. Uh, and he's supposed to be pegged as like the main character and the leader of the group, but he's not that fun. He's not that great. All of the main char- other main characters are much more interesting, like Hyde, who is orphaned and is now living with his friend's parents and is uh, kind of this rebel outside the law. And then Donna, who's dealing with her parents' divorce and feminism in the 70s. Jackie, her dad gets arrested because of, I think, bribery. And so she, like, has to go up and down. She loses her fortune. She gets a lot of money again. And then Fez goes through a lot of different things where he goes through life changes and he finds out about himself and he finds out he loves candy even more than he thought he did. And so there's just a lot of these characters that go through so much. And then, of course, Kelso goes through things. Kelso doesn't really do too much. He kind of... Just kind of stays Kelso for a while. He always ends up back at Kelso. He has a he has a baby at one point. He learns to be a father, and he learns to be a pretty good one. That was a, a pretty good arc for him, I believe. That might be a part of that season eight. So that's about that's about it. That's rough, yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's just such an amazing and good show that I think everybody should go check out and take a look out if, uh, if you haven't. Tell me what you think about that season eight, whether or not you would watch it or whether or not you do watch it. Uh, remember, you can go look at us on Twitter. I'll check that every day, see if anybody's posting about it. But that's pretty interesting to think about because that show is its quite enjoyable. Um, it's one of the ones I grew up watching when I was at the end of my high school days and uh, my early days in college like I am I'm towards the end of my days in college now. But I... Sometimes I still throw it on, and it's just a nice show. There was uh, a bit of drama recently in the news with uh, one of the stars of the show, but um, it was it was about some rough rough subject, and uh, uh, things have happened, and so he's doing some time now. Um, I think he's officially been um, kind of indicted for that. So, but you can still enjoy the show. Uh, I think a lot of times for things we have to separate the actors from the show um, and try to do our best to uh, acknowledge everyone else who worked so hard on those things. So as we get ready to go into this ad break, I recommend that you stick around because this is that final segment where I'm going to talk about the two shows I've been amping up all day, uh, and that's Expedition Unknown and The Good Place. So we'll talk about that as soon as we get back from this ad. See you then. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Hello, everyone, and welcome back from that break. Let's jump into it. So I'm going to talk about First Expedition Unknown. Now, this is a really fun, like, adventure show, uh, and it's about these different mysteries across the world, and it's about, like, uh, these different, like, adventures this guy called Josh Gates takes, and um, he's actually named after Bill Gates, which is fun because uh, if you think about National Treasure... He was named Gates because of Bill Gates. 
and I think that's funny that this guy really is that. So Josh Gates is kind of this, like, pseudo-Indiana Jones in real life. He's going around, and he's doing all these adventures, and he's looking for these different treasures and different things, and it's just his adventures across the globe and world uncovering these, like, cool secrets and trying to find all these different things. And so um, some of the different things he does is he will travel to different places and just, like, explore and try to figure out the different mysteries there. And so I think it's so exciting that he gets to travel around the world and do that. And so for one of them, or we'll just, we'll start off season one, episode one, he talks about Amelia Earhart and he tries to find evidence of her disappearance and try to look in these new lands and try to find her. And then he talks about like the city of gold. He looks for Vikings. He talks about Captain Morgan and the Mayan apocalypse and he's just doing all these things, traveling around the world, doing all these weird, cool things. And so, in and he has other adventures where he looks for Blackbeard's hidden gold. He looks on a quest for King Arthur. He looks for Genghis Khan's tomb. He's just doing all of these really cool adventures. And it's just this entertaining show because of this host, Josh Gates. And he's just... He's so fun, okay? He's amazing to watch. I laugh every time he says a joke. He's so funny because he's he's a real-life Indiana Jones, but he has a dad bod, and so he's just running around. He's, like, kind of chubby. He's having the time of his life, and he just looks like he's so happy. And I know that I, I watch the show with my friends sometimes. I watch it with my girlfriend. We were talking about how much we love the host, how great he is. And then... um my girlfriend got a hold of her mom, and her mom was like, he's talking about Josh Gates? Love Josh Gates. And so I thought it was amazing that not only could myself and other 20-year-olds my age enjoy this show, uh, Expedition Unknown, but so could somebody who's much older than us. They, they could also enjoy and watch this show and have fun. And so I think it's amazing that it can span that kind of gap. And any show that can do that, I'm always welcome to enjoy and watch. And as you go through an episode, I'll kind of walk you through what happens. Oftentimes, Josh introduces you to the subject. He talks about the different people they're going to talk to today. And he kind of like, it flashes forward to the different really cool things that are going to happen in the episode. And oftentimes, he's working on real mysteries. And he's uncovering things that are, are kind of like brand new in the area. There's an episode on, if you have, because um, you can watch this on Hulu, uh, if you have Hulu Live, you can have more episodes and more seasons. Uh, on Hulu Live, one of the episodes, he he quite literally is in the middle of, of helping this person read through an old Spanish book about uh, a 1715 fleet of treasure ships that goes down, and they find new evidence. They find a name of one of the missing ships that is still unfound, and that's huge evidence in that case, and he's there for it. So he's finding real evidence and, like, real things to support his case and, like, his, like, adventures. So... It's always fun to, to actually see, like, real things happening, especially because oftentimes I feel with, like, reality shows or kind of, like, follow-me documentary shows like this is, um, I feel kind of, like, faked out a little bit sometimes because there's always, like, it's too good to be true or they, like, kind of set you up for things that are kind of letdowns. And so they'll, like, focus on something really, really big and it's like, oh, I got a scratch on my ankle, I got a scratch on my ankle, and that's the whole episode. But then Josh Gates is like, cool, we discovered the the name of one of the missing ships that we have, haven't have found out about for over 300 years. That's really cool. We're going to immediately move on because we have something even cooler to talk about. And so I, I think that's just amazing that a show can do that. And oftentimes the adventures he goes on, it's it's him, his camera crew, and he is just talking. And so he's letting us know his thoughts on the different things. He's telling us about them. We see him doing research on the different things. So we know that he's at least, uh, in net, he's like, he's pretty good at researching and things like that. And so he can go through and we watch him find out all these different secrets about things. And oftentimes we see him like discover new information. And so it's always fun to watch like an adventure show or a treasure show and be like, I want to be like that. I want to do that. And then see real results from what he's doing. Um, 
I so often find myself just so disappointed with reality shows. I know we just talked about this, but it's too often am I psyched up for something that's just a letdown. So don't let yourself get caught up in it all. I promise you, Expedition Unknown is fun. It's interesting. You will fall in love with Josh Josh Gates. I promise you. Um, He's just... He's adorable. You just want to, like, laugh with him because he makes all these funny jokes. He's doing all these cool things. And you genuinely just get involved with him. And he's just a showstopper. So I, I highly recommend everybody go give that a look. Everybody go check it out. See if you would enjoy it for yourselves. And let me know if you do. The other thing we're going to talk about is a show called The Good Place. Now, I'm going to read you the description of The Good Place. Uh, because it's a very popular show that quite a few people are familiar with. Um, but I'm just going to give you a, a, quick, uh, a quick like uh, synopsis, okay? So, when Eleanor Shellstrom finds herself in the afterlife, she's both relieved and surprised that she's made it into the good place. But it doesn't take long for Eleanor to realize that she's there by mistake. She hides in plain sight from the good place's architect, Michael, and his all-knowing assistant, Janet. Her surprisingly perfect neighbors, Tahani and Jason, and her open-hearted soulmate, Chidi, help her realize that it's never too late to change. With the help of new friends and a few enemies, Eleanor becomes determined to shed her old way of life in hopes of discovering a new one in the afterlife. So, that's the synopsis. It's about Eleanor in the good place, trying to, to not get caught because she finds out she's here on accident and she's not supposed to be here. Um... And so I'm going to go ahead and say semi-spoilers for this show. Uh, I will not spoil uh, some of the later seasons, but I'm going to spoil the first season because it's such a big deal now. Um, But so we go through and we're watching this amazing first season. And it's Eleanor doing all these things to better herself. She learns about philosophy because Chidi is an ethics professor and he helps teach her. Um, and Tahani and Jason. Tahani's this amazing, beautiful woman who was a, a wealthy socialite and traveled across the world. And her even more wealthy and famous sister is uh, part of her story. And Jason is just this dumb guy from Florida. And he's the comic relief, and he's amazing. And Chidi is just this anxious, very uh, this very anxious eth- ethics professor. And he's just funny and amazing to watch and listen to. And you really get attached to these characters because the writing in the show is so good. And um, uh, there's also the architect, Michael, who comes in and he has a presence and he is so good and so great. And then they have this this all-knowing computer uh, as a person thing named Janet. And Janet is amazing. She does so good there isn't a single moment where janet is on screen that i'm not amazed by what she's doing and her actress is called darcy carden and she's amazing she's in a few other different movies and tv shows uh ted danson plays michael and Kristen bell plays um eleanor so that's pretty cool um very big cast very nice cast of people but they're all just having fun trying to do these different things, and it's a very new and interesting take on, quote-unquote, the good place or heaven in that instance. Um, and it's just, it's it's fun, it's adorable, and so it's it's basically Eleanor learning from Chidi about being a better person. Jason and Sahani come over because they're like, we want to learn too, we want to be a part of it as well. And we find out that in their heaven, things are based off of point systems, and that's how they got in. And so... It's just all of these people trying to do these good deeds. And then the good place starts falling apart. And Eleanor thinks it's because she's there. She's not supposed to be there. And so she's ruining it for everyone else. And so the entire first season is kind of based off of this idea of, do I give up my own personal good place for others? And I think that the show really does a great job of kind of talking about that subject and kind of focusing on it because... Like I said, they do learn to talk about ethics, and the writers of the show were well-versed in the subjects they were talking about. Um, And so it's always nice to see an educated show, a well-written show, talk about subjects that they know about, uh, and do it fluently and well. And so um, they start talking about it, and they realize that things aren't really adding up anymore, and things are coming to a halt. And then, like I said, spoilers for the show coming up, for this show, Good Place. Uh, The end of season one... 
everything kind of hits this climactic moment, and then Eleanor realizes that they aren't in the good place. They are in the bad place. And so it's it's so intense, and everything comes together to this, this climactic moment. And then Michael, who's been this amazing force for power and happiness and trying to help everybody, becomes this evil, evil man, and it's such a twist. And then the entire show flips on its head. And it's no longer what you thought it was. And everything about what they went through and everything that happened means nothing now. And so it's it, it becomes such an unparalleled moment. And all of season two is about these thousands of different times that we've relived season one. And and so it's it's amazing how they did that, how they managed to write not only a system where the first season was so incredibly amazing and great, but then take that system, flip it on its head, and say everything you knew about that is happening ten times over. And so any show that can really catch my attention, keep it, and make me intrigued, as well as change and shift so differently, I'm I'm willing to promote it. So I entirely recommend you go check out The Good Place. I think everybody gives it their all in that show. All of the acting is so amazing and on point, and I think they all just kind of do so well. Like, there's not a single character in there that I'm watching that I'm like, you don't fit perfectly in that role. And as they they get into the later seasons, they get a little bit more higher up in some of the actors that they're bringing on. And so, like, for example, uh, at one point, uh, Nicole Byer comes up, the host of um, Nailed It. We talked about her recently on a podcast. Um, she's on the show. She's an a, she's an actor in it, and so that was a fun little moment to to see happen. And uh, so I just recommend everybody go check it out. I will say this is an odd one because you need two streaming services to be able to watch it. Yeah, that's right. Um, the first three seasons are on Netflix, and you can watch those in full. But then the fourth season, the final season, is over on Hulu, which is kind of a bit odd. Um, the reason is that they don't both have exclusive rights to the the other ones. So Netflix has rights to the first three seasons. Hulu has rights to that fourth one. So if you want to watch the full show all the way through, it is done. It was a four-season ended show. Um, you can go do that by checking out the first three on Netflix, the last one on Hulu. Now, I hope that everybody goes checks those out because I really, really enjoy Expedition Unknown. It's so fun and interesting to hear about and all these different adventures he goes on. And then The Good Place is this just good like sitcom feel-good show that kind of flips you on your head and takes you on an emotional roller coaster that you didn't agree to be on. And you don't even know it until it's over. And then you're throwing up feelings into a bag. But we're not going to talk about that. We're just going to talk about how amazing those shows were and I highly recommend that everyone go check them out and enjoy them. All right. That does bring us to an end of our podcast today. I hope everyone enjoyed. I hope everybody had fun listening today. I know I did. We talked about Hulu. We went ahead and broke that down. And we talked about why that is a good streaming service with the multiple different TV shows on there. We talked about Avatar. We talked about The Legend of Korra. And then we talked about why that 70s show was really good until it wasn't. Uh, And then to finish it off, we talked about Expedition Unknown and The Good Place. So I recommend all those shows and things we talked about. And once again, thank you for listening to the GSMC Television Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I would like to ask that you all please remember to subscribe to the show, uh, leave a nice review, it really helps us out. Go follow us on our multiple different uh, pages like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You know where to find us, and I hope you all have a great night. Thank you again. Bye. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.